A Russian court has sentenced Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich to 16 years in prison on espionage charges. Allegations that he, the Wall Street Journal, and the U.S. government have all repeatedly denied. The American citizen and New Jersey native was arrested last March while on a reporting assignment and has now been detained for nearly 16 months. The verdict comes after just three days of hearings held in secret and was seen as a foregone conclusion in a trial that the U.S. has condemned as a sham. President Biden in a statement said the U.S. is, quote, pushing hard for Evans' release and they will continue to do so. Gershkovich is the first American journalist to be detained in Russia on spying allegations since the Cold War. Anton Troynovsky is the New York Times Moscow bureau chief. He has been following this case closely and he joins me now from Berlin. What's your reaction to the news today that Evan has been sentenced to 16 years in a Russian prison? You know, it's both not unexpected and yet still totally awful. Um, uh, we knew this was going to happen, basically. Um, the Russian court system is not independent. This was not a due process trial. Um, such cases in Russia pretty much always end in a conviction, and we knew that Evan was facing up to 20 years in prison. Um, at the same time, just the fact that someone, that anyone anywhere could get a 16-year prison term just for doing their job as a journalist, you know, I think it just totally boggles your mind. So really, it's a reminder of how just awful uh, a situation this is. You know, well, I think you really just pointed out the most scariest part of this is that trial was held behind closed doors. You know, Evan has been largely cut off from his family, from his friends, from anyone really he knows. So what do you know about how he's doing and what his mental state has been? Look, he has stayed so strong throughout this ordeal. Uh, he, you know, you can see him uh, smiling in the courtroom uh, when when the cameras uh, come out every few months uh, or so. Um, a lot of people, myself included, have been able to exchange letters with him in prison, and we've seen how he's maintained his strength of spirit and his good humor. Um, so, yeah, so he's, I think he's stayed strong. He clearly still has hope, as as do all of us, uh, friends and colleagues of him, that uh, this will end at some point, and, and hopefully sooner rather than later. Well, let's focus on hope, because earlier this week, the Russian foreign minister said that the two countries are holding talks about a possible prisoner swap involving Evan, and that that this verdict could move that forward. You know, what are current negotiations looking like to bring him home? And does the U.S. have anyone that Russia wants to exchange for Evan? So there's almost nothing we really know about them because they're happening completely in secret, these negotiations. But yes, the Russians have said that negotiations are happening. Uh, U.S. officials over the last few months have also said that they are working on it. But you're absolutely right. One of the problems seems to be that there are no obvious candidates for a potential prisoner exchange uh, in terms of Russians imprisoned in the United States. And uh, when Vladimir Putin um, was interviewed by Tucker Carlson back in February in Moscow, Putin actually pointed to a um, convicted Russian assassin in prison in Germany as someone he would want so uh but there you know it's obviously also up to the germans um and and it's a very complicated process clearly that we know very little about well what else could come next in this case is there any chance of appeal um you know so there could be an appeal uh but really as you say i think the thing to watch is what it, is there any movement on the diplomatic front? Um, it could certainly still it could certainly still take a long time, but um, it's true that Russian officials have said uh, throughout this process that they would only do a trade once Evan was convicted, and um, uh, we've seen this process move remarkably quickly. So. Um, a lot of times cases like this take months, and the second hearing in 
Evans uh, trial was originally supposed to take place in August. And um, earlier this week, they they rapidly pushed it forward and um, had a hearing uh, yesterday and then had another one today uh, where they already did the conviction and the sentencing. So um, it's moved very quickly, unusually quickly by Russian standards. And uh, we'll have to see what's mm -hmm. next. Well, obviously, as a journalist myself, this, you know, hits close to home. And I, I do hope that Evan remains safe and strong. Anton, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much.